Some mornings, the whole town is quiet. The shopkeepers have not begun to set out their wares. The Romans are not yet marching through our streets. But just as the cool morning air gives way to the heat of the noontime sun, the early morning quiet can give way to noise and trouble. I never know what the day will bring. Worse. What is wrong, child? She's coughing up blood. Oh. Noah. Tell me. How long has she been coughing up the blood? She just began today. Sarah said that she's very warm. Thank you for coming, Auntie. How is your mother? Not well. She asked for you. That is when I said Maria, but now I cannot wake her. You may go now, Noah. I didn't know what to do. You did well to send for me. She's burning up. We need water, towels, and a basin. Mariam, can you fetch that, please? Delwood? What are you doing? Nothing. I'm going back out. There's blood on this rag. What of it? This should make her fever come down. We should pray for her, Mariam. Father, I thank you that Mariam and I can come into your presence in Jesus' name. I thank you that you hear us when we cry out to you. We bring our dear Layla to you. We ask that you would relieve her pain and her suffering. Restore her to health, Lord. We thank you that you love her even more than we do. And we can safely entrust her into your care. In Jesus' name. Amen. When I try to pray for Mother, I don't feel as so though God hears me. Why not? I don't know. I feel ashamed. Who might ask God for anything? <laughs> but Mariam, 
Jesus took your shame on himself on the cross. And he has given you access to God's presence in his name. But I'm not good like you. Or mother. No one is good enough to come before God. But he has made a way for us through Jesus' sacrifice. Look at the water in this bowl. One drop of blood or any impurity defiles the whole basin. And so it is with sin, my dear. No matter how big or how small it is, Almighty God is pure, holy. He cannot tolerate any sin. But just as this hyssop cleanses the water, God cleanses us through the death and resurrection of Jesus. Although he was pure and without sin, Jesus took upon himself the punishment for our sin, our defilement. He died for us so that we could be made pure. And he rose from the dead, breaking the grip that sin and death had on us, taking away our shame. And so God made his peace with us. And we accept that peace when we receive his promised Messiah, Jesus, and his sacrifice for us, as you have done, Mariam. He hears you, and he loves you so. Mariam, how is your mother? Ah, Rivka, I hope you are well. I am, Musa, and I hope you are well, too. Fever is going down, Father. Auntie Rivka has helped her. Why is this woman in our home? Have I not told you that I do not approve of her or her husband? But Father, she is Mother's friend. She is a good woman and wise. But not in our ways. Her husband is a tax collector for the Romans. And she is a follower of Jesus, the Nazarene. Mother asked me to fetch her, Father. What is the problem here? Two of our soldiers were attacked during the night. We have reason to believe someone from your house was involved. This house? It is not possible. We are good people. We obey the laws. You're harboring a criminal. Stand aside. There are no criminals here. Search the house. You're wasting your time. There are only women inside. I was at home all night, and my son, and my son-in-law. Search inside. We're with the flock, in the field. No, don't! My wife is dangerously ill. <laughs> Come, we will return another time. My son, what has he done now? It is all right, mother. They've gone. I pray for him. 
I pray for him. I worry about him too. He's so stubborn and willful. With mother so ill, he should be taking responsibility for the family, serving the family. But instead, he is putting us in danger. He thinks only of himself. How can God love someone who is willing to throw away everything that is important? Jesus once told a story about a young man who acted selfishly, who only thought about himself. A son wanted to receive his inheritance early. His father wasn't pleased, but he gave him what he asked. And so, the son went off to seek his fortune in a foreign land. Well, it was not long before the young man had squandered all he had in, in selfish pleasures. He was soon penniless, friendless, and starving. What did he do? He remembered his father. He recalled his father's generosity and provision, and how even the servants in his father's household were well cared for and well fed. He decided to return home and tell his father, I have sinned against God and against you. I'm not fit to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. But even while the son was far off, his father ran out to greet him. He embraced him. He kissed him. And then he told his servants, hurry, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and shoes on his feet. And then get the prized calf and kill it. And let's have a feast. Because this son of mine was dead, but now he's alive. He was lost, but now he's been found. His father accepted him? Oh, he was watching for his safe return. Do you think God is waiting for Tawood? Oh, yes, dear. Even running after him. I wonder if the father would welcome his son that way, if the son had done something terrible. His son acted shamefully, and the father forgave him. And I think it must have taken great courage for the son to return home and face his father. Now I must be going home, or my husband will come looking for me. You have had a long day. These are difficult times for you and for your family. But I have found that even in the most difficult times, we can take hope in God's presence and in his word. Mariam. These are for you. The prophet Isaiah painted a picture of this hope when he said that when God comes, even the desert rejoices. Be sure to come for me again if your mother needs me. I will. Thank you for everything.
Which character do you most relate to and why? Why would a person wonder whether God hears her prayers? According to Mariam, both Rivka and Layla are good women. What do you think makes a person good? What must we do to be acceptable to God and know that He hears our prayers? What does the story of the prodigal son tell us about God's attitude toward us?